All right, what is going on, guys? It's Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal TV. Obviously, this is the main event. Uh, this is what everyone is talking about right now. Everybody is debating. Uh, just want to forewarn you that this, this show is going to be a little stressful. So if you don't like scary movies, do not watch scary movies. Uh, this is anxiety-ridden kind of stories here. Uh, some call it doom and gloom. You can call it that. We're we're for, uh, looking at it from a prepper standpoint. So this is the stuff that we follow. This is what we, uh, we like to focus on. Again, uh, not everybody does. And if you don't, you're an adult. You don't have to watch it. Uh, because today, it, this is a much bigger event than many people are actually realizing. Of course, people are going, oh, bridge somewhere went down. It, they, they don't really care. They don't think of it. They think, oh, that's going to affect some local traffic or something. Uh, this was a major strategic area. Uh, this going down is one of the few spots that we can bring uh, hazardous things into and import into our country. It is a really kind of scary spot. So we'll cover this here. But Francis Scott, Key Bridge, uh, it, it went down. And it will spark a U.S. food and car supply issues and strengthen calls to cut foreign imports. Now, there's a lot of, uh, obviously, theories on what happened. Officially, they're going to tell us for the next few weeks. I'm sure ah, it was nothing. It was this or that. The timing of this is the worst part. As far as all of the things going on around the world, obviously what just happened in Vlad's country, uh, what is going on in Netanyahu's country, uh, what is going on in uh, the Ayatollah in Iran's country, uh, and then, of course, what's going on here in the U.S. with our, our borders and everything else. This is really crazy timing. And not to mention China, critical infrastructure, hacking, everything else. It says, uh, of course, and if you haven't seen the video of this, we've attached it to our website so you can watch the full video. Uh, there's multiple angles. The thing slowly creams into it and takes the whole thing down. Not going to go into what other people saw into it because I'm sure most of you are probably right. You can believe your own eyes and you can decide what happened. Uh, but as far as the results and what's going to happen from this, the consequences are dire. It says the collapse in Maryland will result in widespread disruption to trade, but Americans are set to avoid a return to the supply chain chaos seen during CV, experts have said. Now, that, that uh, prior event that they're talking about is, if you remember, all of the containers were stuck off of the West Coast. We had uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of ships lined up and basically just sitting there waiting to come in. Uh, that was just a horrible thing. There wasn't enough people to bring in the containers, whatever else, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but that was pretty bad, and it caused a lot of problems. In fact, it caused problems that we still, still are reeling from today. The inflation, everything that's going on, uh, some say, you know, obviously that some of it was almost seemed purposeful, right? But six people are feared missing, and this was a pothole repair crew that they uh, said was on the dang thing. Uh, luckily, somehow there wasn't cars driving across it. If you watch the video, there was a couple trucks. There was at least a few big vehicles that cross over seconds before. Whoever was driving those vehicles, go buy a lotto ticket because you just got so, so lucky. Um, it's it's kind of crazy that there were no cars on it. If you watch, there were cars the entire time. The second that there's no cars, boom, uh, all of this went down. Literally, uh, trade experts have warned that widespread disruption is expected as city chiefs scramble to clear the debris and open the shipping lanes before attempting to rebuild the bridge. They also claim that there will be calls to cut dependency on imports. Uh, again, the automob automobile and agricultural sectors will most likely be impacted. What's so crazy, too, is we are in this section. Everybody's talking about how we're going to cut uh, imports, that everything's going to be made back in America. Uh, they're talking about how, you know, we're going to go all to electric, all of this. Meanwhile, we are cutting all of our ties with countries like China. 
Uh, we're we're now not using some of their products in our government services. We're cutting the dependency on this, to cutting the dependency on that. They are actually cutting their dependency on the U.S. They're going to Vlad's country to essentially make up for that. They are actually trading land in each other's countries to be able to grow things that they normally get from the U.S. Like this is not looking good for the for the world. Uh, Dex, let's bring my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Oh, well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. So this this thing is this is a giant deal. It is. Uh, it, this is not. This is really really bad, and most people are not looking at this uh, in, in the big picture. It is absolutely a strategic piece of infrastructure when you think about how it connects. Uh, you know, it's a north south line. It, the bridge itself was um, was the primary bridge used to move hazardous material because the hazardous material can't go through the tunnel systems that are in the area. So things like natural gas, refined fuels, anything else that meets hazardous requirements, which is a lot. There's a lot of things that get moved that way. Um, as far as imports go, they say that maybe Mazda, Mercedes, Subaru, uh, Mitsubishi, Volkswagen, those will all be some of the bigger um, companies that do a lot of the importing and going through that port. Um, are going to have a problem. There's a huge coal terminal on the other side that that brings coal in, um, and it won't that coal will not be able to come in and go to that terminal and then be distributed by trains. So there'll be a lack of that. And by the way, that coal a lot of it is going to power plants to run and make electricity. There's a huge sugar refinery. Um, the sugar refinery, uh, actually the coal plant, I think, took a 10% plunge in its stock price just because of this uh, bridge collapse, just in the one day. Um, so everybody's worried about what's going to happen. The sugar refinery, Domino Sugar Refinery, is there. And if the sugar can't come in, uh, it can't be refined. Um, and then a little bit of an inconvenience, there's actually even cruise ship terminals in there, people that were out on cruises that uh, no longer can come back to port. So they're going to have to port someplace else, and they're going to have to bust these people all the way back because um, they won't be able to come into those ports. This and is, that's that's not all. There's a lot more. This seems like, uh, so along with a lot of the warehouses and, and manufacturers in the country that have had just accident after accident after accident after accident after accident, it's it's. Our country is just one block at a time. It's like somebody's f taking the Jenga blocks and just pulling them out uh, one block at a time. I guess that's the best way I could put this as an analogy. It's like a Jenga block getting pulled out at one at a time. And some of them, they're like, ah, I'm going to take three at a time and I'm going to take them from the bottom. At some point, the whole thing. And uh, I guess some countries actually want to be the one that pulls that last brick out, that last of two bricks on the bottom, and sees the whole thing crumble. That's what it feels like. Obviously, they are calling anything other than, oh, no, this was totally, you know, above board. <laughs> yep. Anything like that is now be considered this. But wait three months. Wait four months, I guarantee you something's going to come out, something crazy is going to be out there. Now, there's analysts and people that are saying that they have information on this. I think it's too it's too soon. You, you can't absolutely verify it. But I believe some of the analysts' inf info and, and some of the info that they're saying that they're getting from intelligence, I believe that. And we've attached that over on the website. I believe that a little bit more than what they are uh, saying, you know, as far as uh, how does something like this happen. Now, there are theories about the video, this and this and that. I'm not, you guys can go watch it for yourself. You can be the judge for yourself. My friend uh, Dave Reed just called me right before the show and said, hey, there's some interesting stuff in that video. I, I totally agree. Um, but how is this going to affect us? What do we need to prepare for next? This isn't the big one. And by the way, um, here's, a, here's just a side note. Most people, most countries cannot just take us head on. They just can't. Uh, we have uh, the teeth and the might of the U.S. military. So if you were to take us on, uh, how would you how would you do that? And would you maybe want to soften uh, that those would you maybe want to kind of grind down those teeth a little bit first? Maybe maybe grind down the 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 teeth of the military first. <sighs> 
It's an idea. We're going to talk about this much more. We're going to touch on the Devil Comet. We're going to touch on the solar eclipse. We're going to touch on all the other events that are going on, and we're going to show you the maps and show you where all of these things are happening in the world. If you're not subscribed already, then you should be. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in this show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. <laughs> They're gonna get you, the fire starts now, and it gets bigger. Take a look at the big picture, they took a right now, and took the bridge up. I said, oh no, they're gonna get you, the fire starts now, and it gets bigger. Take a look at the big picture, they took a right now, and took the bridge up. All right, what is going on, guys? Again, it's Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and if you're just joining us live, obviously the event of uh, everybody's day is probably this crazy crazy event that happened over uh, this toll road right uh here is on the map of course where it is just to kind of show you to give you a bearings of of what it, it entails this whole area inside of this obviously if this is down it, it essentially makes a speed bump not even a speed bump more of a uh, a wall uh, that it's going to be a uh, cleanup. They say this thing isn't going to take a couple months. It's not going to take three or four months. This thing may take a year or longer to actually rebuild. It's a big deal. This is not, uh, this, this could affect us uh, heavily. As far as our economy goes, this is definitely going to affect us. It, w it will affect you personally at some point down the road. Everything does. Uh, it's a f fragile system, especially now after CV. So uh, we're we're definitely not getting our our uh, we're not getting back up on that horse for a little bit after this one. All right, and then uh, Dex, let's go into uh, Russia's FSB chief accuses UKR of uh, being behind a certain event that just happened. Wow. So this is a big, not a big shift in what we were thinking, but it's a big shift in the admission or at least the words that are coming out of that country. So they, without any real evidence, more just statements, uh, they are now pointing officially the finger at the United States, at the United Kingdom, and of course, UKR, uh, as it relates to that event that happened in Moscow. So um, this is a big deal in the sense that that's, you know, coming from their Federal Security Service or FSB. Um, they say that they believe the action was prepared by both um, the groups that had been originally named, but was facilitated by uh, the special services of the West. And those included those names I just mentioned, including the U.S. So um, this is coming out like the same day that this thing happens in Baltimore. This is coming out now and basically puts the uh, line directly um, at us in the U.K. Um, and it, well, I think it'll change everything. Now, it, what will matter is if they take this beyond just words and come up with proof that will that will be big as it relates to the world stage so to speak um i'm sure we're probably working quickly to prove that we had nothing to do with it um, or at least to provide evidence of such and if we can that will help uh the case as well because the case will will not just be made 
on the field of, of battle, whether it's words or even kinetic, it'll also happen across, you know, the global ties that uh, countries have with one another. So that's, uh, that's the, that's the concern. Now, of course they're dismissing it as utter nonsense. Uh, I guess our community is more looking at this, like we, we don't believe most of what is coming out of anywhere. Uh, but this is right after it happened. I mean, it was within seconds. We, our community was like, eh, yeah, they're going to point the finger at us. No matter what, no matter who comes and says, oh, we did it. Which, by the way, the, the guys who said we did it is a group that's not the traditional group. They have the first four letters of the traditional group, the I-N-S and I-N-S as that. But then they have the K afterwards. That K is a different group entirely. Now, a lot of these groups, at one point or the other, they've had some sort of connection with some three-letter agency, whether it be the FSB or the CIA. They have had some sort of origin story like Wolverine, only it's usually related to the U.S. Gov. Uh, our hands aren't clean here in the U.S., and, of course, Russia's hands aren't clean as well. Uh, so whatever's going on right now, what we think, though, is besides who's who's pulling the strings is what is this puppet show going to look like and how bad is it going to get? Uh, if you are a regular person in the U.S., you should be looking at having a basic plan with your family. We keep stressing that because at this point, it is absolutely getting extremely real. That We're in a crazy year, too. If you think that four years ago was crazy, think about how it is right now. Think about all of the stuff they have done to try to prevent a certain person and none of them have really changed the public outlook, it's only made it worse, actually. So if there really is a divide that is just straight down the middle, it's going to get crazy. You have all of the most powerful people in the world either prepping or saying it's about to get bad. So I guess we're all going to go, nah, la, 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 it's all going to be fine. We can be optimists, but we can also be optimists that are prepared. You can say, you know what? It's going to be great. You can you can think like that. You can also know what's going on, too, and say, I'm still going to be okay. So it's this is exactly what we said the first day. Yeah, I mean, I, I said it, of course, a million times. I said it, the finger is going to be pointed back at us within days. And look at what happened. It's obvious. Uh, our whole community saw that one coming. And then Belarus, uh, we together are so much stronger. The, the Fugle fam, the Mafia, you guys are what makes this special. So before we go any further, let's go over to the chat. Thank you guys so much. Uh, by the way, new subscribers. Uh, oh, thank you, Greg. Greg Davis says NASA has a simulation exercise for an asteroid hitting Asia in 2027. If you search 2027 asteroid, you can see... Uh, the PDF from government website. I encourage you to read the whole exercise. It's pretty creepy. I have. I've actually shown that on the show. Uh, Dex, uh, maybe we can attach that. Do you remember when we covered that? The 2027 exercise? Yeah, it's yes. it's, it's spooky. Um, and then Julie Pilkerton. Thanks, Marf and Dex, for all the work you do. Hey, thank you, Julie. Thank you for recognizing us, too. Uh, Donald Massey, thank you so much. Ericsplace.com LLC. Just wanted to show some love to the entire Fugu family, Adam and family, and Dex and family and everyone else. Eric's Place, thank you for also becoming a member. I appreciate that. Sharon Luann Riviera, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, Sue Wild, uh, Christian Silva, Saskafras. And Dragonflies, Prepstead and Designs, and Mike Lange. Uh, Mike Lange? Mike, Mike Lang? Mike Lang? I think it's Lang. Got an E on the end, so I don't know. Uh, thank you. Thank you and thank you. Thank you, guys. And I do uh, try to shout out every single new subscriber. Or if you have to resub, uh, a, a lot of people have been telling us that the subscribe button is... Uh, I'm not saying it's broken. It, they actually are saying they do it, they refresh, and it's gone. So if you can... Try to let us know if that's happening. Uh, push the subscribe button and then press the all notifications button. That's like you con telling YouTube like, hey, this is what I want to see and I want to see all of it. So make sure uh, to click that all notifications bell because the subscribe, they actually have it in their agreement with you and every person who signs up for YouTube that, you know, unless you press that all, you're not going to get all. They're going to decide for you. Uh, Maryland uh, in the house. Gene Splice. Hi from Charleston, South Carolina. Bruce Fry. Nice to see you. And if you already said it again, you can. Don't worry about 
the uh, spamming where you live again because I wasn't getting to it. Um, so if you want to let me know where you're from, Tosha, New Mexico. Hey, nice to see you. Obsidian Survival from Yakistan, Washington. Is that really a place? I, I, I totally believe that. Um, Southern Idaho, what is happening? Missouri Freedom. Hey, from Missouri. Uh, we've got Mir 504. We've got Tevin Tui, uh, Kevin H., James McGowan, Saul Paul, uh, Saul DePaul, Nana of Seven. Hey, nice to see you. Briar Patch, uh, Pennsylvania in the house. Cece, uh, J Pass, Nampa, Idaho. Infrastructure in danger. I agree with you. And I, you can only shout it from the mountaintops so many times. Then people get annoyed that you're telling them that, you know, telling them of imminent danger. Lavender Lattes, Carlsbad. We've got uh, Booger from Utah. We've got Ryan Alter, Central OHIO. And then we've got uh, Dan Daly. Every time you do that OHIO to my friend Link from Ohio, I think of him. Uh, he passed a few years ago of cancer. Uh, he was such a character. Uh, he was uh, one of my one of my best friends, uh, and he's just such a good guy. One of the best people from Ohio I know. Oh, I oh I know. And then cesspool, DFW, Texas, North Carolina here. Hey, Mister, thank you. Uh, Lakeside Laura from Missouri. Uh, let's see here, Idaho Falls, and so many more. New York, Oregon. Uh, I know we got California. Valley View from Ohio today. I did not see that yet. So I will have to check that out. Simultaneous uh something was going that uh going on. Uh somebody said my husband is semi awake and my You know what I I've seen a lot is where the wife or the husband they'll be kind of completely, you know, with it. Uh but they can't even talk to their husband or wife. I have a family member that can't really talk to their husband about all of this because he's he kind of understands but especially during like CV and all that, he just didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to hear about what was going on. Now you fast forward a few years, everything that this person was saying to them is now like verified. But now people, they don't go back and check what they thought was right. They never go back and actually check if they were wrong. And now even if it is proven that they were wrong, they're like, ah, well, whatever, that's yesterday. <laughs> especially about stuff uh they just proved in court um that they couldn't talk down about a certain a certain med that was was really popular back then the company has to take down any anti uh, ads about it comparing it to veterinary and stuff and then rip curl readiness hey thank you for making it rip appreciate that Go check out Rip on uh, on marfuglenews.com slash friends, along with wages. Of course, wages is covering, there's so many different uh, crazy solar storms happening right now, so make sure to go check them out. All right, and then uh, Belarus leader undermined the Kremlin's dubious claims that UK are backed the ISIS. Uh, Dex, so I guess he's yeah. not, and not falling in line? Or? Well, I think the, they're they're reaching here a little bit or maybe they're not maybe they and i say they i'm talking western media that's writing this article and talking about it but basically what the belarusian president said was hey those uh, bad guys who um you guys everybody heard about coming out of moscow actually tried to come into our country but we had shut them down and so they kept going further uh, meaning they headed towards Belarus first and then went to towards uh, UKR. And that now they're saying, well, that contradicts what uh, Vlad was saying about it because he said that they were headed towards UKR. Now, I don't know that that really invalidates it. I don't know that he was saying um, this is exactly every step they made along the way. He just said they were heading back to UKR, which is technically if they were denied or or didn't make it to Belarus and took a left turn and kept going, um, then yeah, they would have ended up in UKR if they'd have made it. So um, they're they're putting this out saying he's contradicting them. Um, I don't know. Take it however you want to take it. But um, if it is a contradiction or it does change the the story, that would be interesting because of the fact that Belarus, the president, has such a close tight knit relationship with Russia. They don't typically uh, walk out of lockstep. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what comes of this. But at the moment, 
the the West is certainly framing it as one that it is is much different than uh, what was originally told to us by uh, Vlad. Yeah. So, and it could be a part of Ganda. It could be a part of the 4D chess that's going on. Corey Bennett, thank you for subscribing, and Polly Medina, thank you. Uh, for joining as a member xo2 quilt thank you for subscribing a lot of folks that came over from the news video which again go check out because we just talked about the devil comment uh the the eclipse uh three body problem if you haven't seen that yet um i i don't know it's the creators of game of thrones and the creator of true blood but it has an interesting premise it's not so much the people in it or anything else which again, a lot of the people are actually from Game of Thrones. I I didn't realize that until halfway in. I'm like, wait, all of almost all these actors are from Game of Thrones. But yeah, and it's on Netflix instead of HBO. But yeah, and then uh, I know a lot of people don't still don't have Netflix. I had to have it for certain shows that my kids watched. Um, but I did. I canceled it for like four months after the whole uh, cooties thing or uh, cuties. That was um that was a whole thing in itself, um, but yeah, I unfortunately had I re, I broke down and did it again. But yeah, the, that show, by the way, Netflix is like collapsing itself. Netflix, uh, it's like nine out of ten of the things that are trending are foreign films, which they always had foreign films. Netflix always had it broken up into countries. In fact, you used to be able to use something like NordVPN. And put yourself in a different country and you'd get different films. Now you don't. I, I And I tried it with like three different places. I, I put myself somewhere else. And it gave me the same films because now they don't have the budget to make like 10, 10 blockbuster films for this country, this country, this country. It's like all of the films are like other uh, languages and dubbed. And it's just, it's crazy how bad Netflix uh, got hit by all of these other services saying, well, we can have our own. I think that whole system is going to collapse, by the way. Uh, people can't afford $8 per service per thing for 50 different services. I, I, it was nice when Netflix had everything, but uh, sp uh, speaking of solar stuff, and, and Rip Curl made a comment, says, says uh, we're having all of these crazy solar events and at the same time, a lot of blackouts and brownouts. Hmm, wonder if that's related. I don't doubt it at all. I think we're also coming up into 2024, 2025, the peak of the solar cycle. Rip, you know this. We're heading into the crazy part of that cycle. I I'm wouldn't be surprised if we have some major solar event. That could be why a lot of this stuff is happening. Like, what if our power goes out, our grid goes down because of something like that? Uh, but if you haven't already, you can protect yourself against it and help our independent media at the same time. Go put a device like an EMP shield on your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, home, uh, generator, and that will protect you against an EMP or a CME or a uh, corona, uh, corona mass ejection uh, or a Carrington level event from the sun. It's very easy to do. Red to red on your battery, black to black on your battery uh, wires, and then green to ground to a part of your frame, and then you're set. Just bolt it into the side of your engine block, and you're rolling. That means you can get home to your family. If you work far from home, that's definitely a good thing to do. Or you can get out to bug out. If you're in the city, probably want to get out of there. Uh, marfuglenews.com slash EMP, and make sure to use the code MARF to get $50 off and to help our channel at the same time. That's, again, marfuglenews.com slash EMP, and make sure to use the code MARF. Uh, J girl, that's me. I like French toast. That is incredibly random. I love it. Uh, and then we have, uh, why is Japan changing its ban on exporting lethal weapons? And why is it so controversial? So first of all, this Japan's been changing a lot of things and that's usually what happens before you get prepared for a war. Japan's cabinet okay to plan to sell future next generation fighter jets to other countries on Tuesday. It's latest step away from the pacifist principles of the country adopted at the end of World War II. The controversial decision is to allow international arms sales is expected to help secure Japan's role in a year old project to develop new fighter jets together with Italy and the UK. But it's also part of a move to build up Japan's arms industry and to bolster its role in global affairs. 
So they're trying to step up onto the podium. For now, Tokyo says that it doesn't plan to export co-developed lethal weapons other than the new fighters, which aren't expected to enter service until 2035. So um, they are actually changing a whole lot of things, but they have approved a revision to the guidelines for selling defense equipment overseas and authorized the sales of future jets. The government says that it has no plans to export other developed things, and it says Japan has long prohibited most arms exports under the country's past of its constitution, although it's begun to take steps towards a change amid rising regional and global tensions. In 2024, it began to export some non-lethal military supplies, and last December it approved a change that would allow sales of 80 lethal weapons to components that uh, um, that it manufactures under licenses from other countries back to licensors. The change, which was made in December, cleared the way for Japan to sell U.S.-designed Patriot missiles to the United States, helping replace munitions that Washington is sending over to UKR. Again, that, that whole thing was a big and controversial change. That alone uh, was a big deal for also Vlad. Vlad was pissed off by this. Uh, and, and by the way, U.S. Uh, citizens are pissed off about this. We have given all of our stuff to UKR. Now we're literally spending our money to rebuy that stuff from Japan because we are so low. So, and uh, as far as the new fighter jet, obviously they are they are uh, pumping up it, but mainly they're stepping away from the old Japan the old pacifist Japan say bye uh, not not to mention they're also changing cultural things that have been stuck that have basically uh, not changed for decades and decades uh, they have a lot of things in Japan that are just a whole lot different that people love about Japan uh, and they're changing all of it uh, they're changing a lot of things. They're also adding in very draconian measures in Japan as well. If you're from Japan, I'm I'm sorry that you have to deal with the same changes that we have already had here happen, uh, including tracking tracking people and tracing people like they like they do here. Uh, Japan's always been a very cash centric uh, country. Uh, and then Dex, do you want to go over North Korea? Says no interest in holding summit with Japan. We just covered yeah. this, and now this is kind of an update. Yeah, so the update is they're not going to do it. They have zero interest. Uh, it's 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 funny. It kind of goes hand in hand with the soccer match, right? They didn't want to have that either. They're like, forget it. We don't want to meet with you. So uh, they announced, North Korea announced yesterday that, hey, Japan's uh, prime minister asked to meet with us. And now they're saying um, the, the sister has come out and said that uh, – that they did reach out, but they have no interest uh, whatsoever in any further discussions or negotiations. So they're not in a position right now to, it sounds like at all, to do any sort of discussions or any follow any path towards, you know, regional peace or stability. Um, it sounds very much like they want to hold true to their position of, you know, they're ready for conflict and they're ready to take the South. And that's the position they keep saying. Now, most people that analyze the situation say, you know, don't don't worry about it. It's just them, you know, beating their chest. They like to talk a big game. They're never going to do anything. But their actions certainly have been much different in the last few months, at the last six months, in the last year compared to many years before. I mean, it's a lot of the same thing, but they've been doing a lot, a lot more of the same thing at a greater scale. They've been launching many more missiles and they've been stockpiling and building up and expanding their manufacturing. So, you know, it is very likely um, that they may not be bluffing this time. And I guess that's this could be another one of those signs that sort of lets us know that it looks like they're not in a position to have any conversation because they could easily have a conversation and maybe gain favor, gain something in their benefit. But that's not the case. They're saying absolutely no. Now I want to point out. I always point this out uh, because I think it's it's just it's weird how media covers these things. I it's weird how MSM covers these things. So you know I've pointed out a thousand times when it talks about Vlad, right? It says the despotic ruler, the tyrannical ruler, the mad or the the insane, you know, Putin, uh, the, the, anyone. 
every time they talk about Kim Jong Un or the sister, I, and actually it's more about the sister. They they say the weird things about Kim. Every time they describe the sister, look, they they say the powerful sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. This is a this is a descriptor, right? So they describe her as powerful. In another one, uh, I saw the other day, they uh, they said the. Uh, it was a very complimentary word, right? They, these are the words they put, and they put it in before the thing even starts. This is the very first part of it. The powerful sister of North Korean. You're, you're, it's already putting in your mind. This woman is powerful. It doesn't say the insane or crazy or any of that. It doesn't say this negative connotation. Why do they do that for somebody like her? I, it's just weird how how these descriptors go. Um, meanwhile, they'll say the same thing. They'll say positive things about JB. But when they're talking about uh, our former president, they'll say, you know, the 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 R word DT or the um, uh, the the B I G G O T, you know, this, the the bigotrous or something like that. They'll say that before the word. So before you even get reading, you've already judged that person. Uh, it's not, you know, obviously n nobody is non biased but the news used to try to pretend. They used to try to pretend like they were trying to give a fair and balanced look at what is actually happening by the facts, not by the feelings. Now it's all a feeling. So just a side opinion. Sorry for the rant, but every time I see it, I ha it, it bothers me. It, it bothers me that they always have to put something in there. And then South Korea has grave concerns over China using water cannons against the Philippine chips. You know, we we've heard so much about these the, the water cannon scenario. Uh, we, I've been covering it. It's, if if you're just a casual news reader, you might read one or two things out of a, a whole month. They cover this almost every day, um, five days a week. There's almost one daily thing about China using their water cannons against us. So it's really drilling in. Ma mainstream media is really drilling in. That these these water cannon incidents that China's Coast Guard dealing with Philippines that they are really really pushing hard on the Philippines it's setting us up for something that's what I feel like and the the more that they cover it the more that more people weigh in on it they're really trying to do as much as they can with it without actually hurting or or doing something serious it's like this isn't the main event. Uh, I feel like they're setting setting us up for some event to happen with the Philippines and China, and the world is going to weigh in. They're telling all of their own countries, you know, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. They shouldn't do this. It's like they're they're already doing the PR uh, route with China. Something's about to go down with China. That's that's how I feel about this. Uh, but they have grave concerns. That's definitely a, a strong descriptor. Uh, of course, if you don't know anything, if you just joined us and you haven't seen any of the previous shows, China has used their Coast Guard ships with these giant uh, fire hoses, and these things are strong. It, in fact, they used the hose. It was able to break the front window of a, a civilian ship, and it was able to actually injure. It sent glass flying into the thing. Uh, I actually, somebody else posted uh, pictures on uh, Twitter or X, and it basically blasted the window. The glass went in and injured several people. Uh, they're very powerful. These things are meant to put out giant fires. Uh, it's, I mean, it, it takes a few guys to hold a, a regular fire hose that comes off of a truck. These things are even more powerful than that. Uh, not only could they knock a person back, it could actually take somebody's... Uh, it could perish somebody real quick if, if you uh, continued to hold this on somebody and there wasn't somewhere for them to go. Uh, but they say the foreign ministry on Tuesday expressed grave concerns over China's recent use of water cannons against Philippine ships, saying it stokes tension in the South China Sea and undermines a maritime order. So where were they the first like 20 times this has happened? Why are they weighing in right now? That's what I want to know. Dex, isn't it, you know, like this has been going on for a long time. Why specifically is South Korea chiming in right now? Or is it just that they're chiming in and they're updating their own country on what's been going on over the last couple of months? I think it's more to create an alliance um, across those that are against China. And as we're seeing, the Philippines was getting more vocal. We had Jake Sullivan 
make the uh, was it him i think it was him that made the tour uh went to uh seoul and then turned around and went to the philippines and put out uh words towards um towards china if it wasn't him it was uh blinken it may have been blinken i'm sorry i think it was blinken that did both but he you know he went to seoul and then he went to the philippines and talked and said and said the u.s was going to stand behind the philippines um, so I'm wondering if, if this is in combination with that tour that they made um, and got, you know, South Korea to sort of jump on and make sure that they reaffirm that in the Pacific theater, there is a strong alliance from, you know, America's allies, whether it be South Korea, Japan and um, the Philippines. Somebody said stinking Blinken, Samson uh, J. Pedroza. That's. That's a good one. Stinking Blinken. I haven't heard that one before. Um, not being facetious either. Um, by the way, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, NJM and Carol White. Uh, thank you, Letitia Stoll. Uh, appreciate you. Thank you for supporting Independent, Letitia. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Um, thank you, uh, Donald Massey again. Thank you, Ericsplace.com. Thank you. Uh, Greg Davis and of course uh, Letitia says Adam remember the Economist magazine cover in January with the cargo ship looking uh, part of it so I forgot to mention that today Jacob actually uh, I did not think of that Jacob did uh, Jacob Israel actually put that on one of his shows I haven't seen it yet people have emailed me about this show uh, but I will show you can can you grab me a picture of the uh, Economist cover this is very spooky um, yes, Letitia, I do. And I didn't think of it until, mind you, until I heard about Jacob talking about it. And I go, I guess he used a clip of mine in one of his videos. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but yes, I talked about this. I covered this back when it happened. And it is super, super weird. Once you see the cover, you'll understand. I'll show you guys so you can get in on the tea. Uh, it's, it's weird. All of the Economist covers have had some sort of predictive angle even back to cv when they had the ones with the uh the pangolin i mean what a random random animal to have in there uh th thank you so much dex uh let's see here let me show you this sure thing. this is isn't that wild dex look at this oh yeah and mind you, there's some other things here. So this is this is right over here. This is what you wouldn't you wouldn't look at it too seriously, right? But then look. You it some people didn't even catch that that was a cargo ship. But if you actually look carefully, there's even the lines on it of all of the different stacked containers. And then if you we actually compared this back in the clip. We compared this to an actual ship, and they even have the the proportions of a ship like this. And then all of the stacked red, blue, and white containers. That's the typical cargo ship. Um, this one, by the way, if you break down this one, it shows SpaceX. It shows DT. I, it shows Putin versus Zelensky. It shows time running out. It shows um, the... Uh, things getting put into the box right and then it shows the eclipse it even shows the eclipse um, it shows Neuralink hooking up to uh, the brains it shows kind of the watchful eye that's kind of creepy it shows the storms it shows the uh, electrics and then I forget this one was G versus I don't know if that's JB did we ever find that out and then it also shows kind of the world flipping that, that, that I thought was kind of weird. Um, yeah, it shows it shows two different things. SpaceX and then NASA. And then bombs and peace. Just super weird. This whole thing. And then it has the overall theme of the red and blue. The world ahead, 2024. Spooky. And then I forget what this was. This was like, this has the euro, money, this, that. And it shows all the currencies dropping. Huh. Which is kind of crazy because that's what's happening. Oh, and then over in China it shows fire and electric cars. Um, fire rising up. 
and then a meteor. Do you guys notice that? The meteor? Wonder if that's the devil comet. Hmm. Oh, and China, I, did, I didn't think of that. China, China, uh, Chinese electric vehicles. Yeah. Oh, and gold. I didn't think, see that? Look, it's got gold over here. Gold just shot the heck up. That's weird. And I don't know what this last one is. Does, can anybody in chat point out what this little black box is in the middle? I'll just point to it. It's uh, right under the red and blue bricks right here. What is that? What what the heck is that? Dex, do you know? I don't know if you can see on your screen here yet. I'm not certain. And then we also need to look over at the highway robbery of $16 for a magazine. $16. Are you kidding? Okay. Just a side note. Write that down. Okay. Okay. And then China's Xi Jinping to meet with American executives on Wednesday, sources say. Uh, Xi Jinping is, of course, going to meet with Americans. China's president will meet with American business leaders in Beijing on Wednesday, according to three sources with knowledge on the matter, in a follow-up to his November dinner with U.S. investors in San Francisco's. Uh, San Francisco's. Francisco's. By the way, the San Francisco visit wasn't that... So he didn't just go to San Francisco by himself. He went during the APEC thing, right? Was it APEC? It was APEC, where we brought out yes. all the flags and, and uh, we lined the streets with people going, Oh, we love China. China is awesome. They're our new ruler. The meeting was proposed by Chief Executive of U.S. Insurer Chubb, Evan Greenberg said one of the sources who has direct knowledge of the matter. Other attendees include Stephen Orlins, president of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, and Craig Allen, president of the U.S.-China Business Council. The meeting was first reported by Wall Street Journal last week. The meeting is not part of the China Development Forum agenda, which took place in Beijing March 24-25. Uh, it says, and deliberately scheduled for Wednesday to separate it from the high-profile forum for senior foreign executives and China's leaders. China's State Council Information Office did not immediately respond to requests for comment. I'm sure that's not high on their priority. Officials who spoke at the opening of the forum this weekend expressed confidence China would hit its economic targets, including growth of about 5% this year, and pledged further support for companies in strategically important sectors, an area Xi has dubbed new productive forces. Is there something tongue-in-cheek there thing going on? And in November, Xi told American business leaders in San Francisco that China is ready to be a partner and a friend of the U.S. And there is plenty of room for cooperation in a bid to overcome China's struggles to entice foreign investment. I want to remind people we were actually in peace talks with Japan as Pearl Harbor happened. Just a side note. Write that down. Uh, Dex, I, I, on the list of people, I didn't see anything stranger, but we don't have the full list. They I don't, don't have the list. They haven't put it out. Yeah. So there's some speculation. Now, I would, you know, think, you know, the other thing I understand is they have to change their travel because they were planning to be for a specific event. And he's wanting this meeting to be outside of that event. So it's not part of that event. So now they have to stay. And of course, that makes it difficult for a lot of these CEOs who may have really big commitments and other things that they've already got scheduled for them to extend their stay. So we don't know who's really going to be there and who's not. I know it's been rumored that some have already said they can't, uh, but I'm ex I'm thinking that there's some really high-profile CEOs that do a lot of work with China, um, like uh, Tim Cook and uh, Elon Musk. I don't know if they're going to be on the list or not, but we'll maybe we'll find out as that comes closer or after the fact. Yeah, I guess and even Elon could go. His second biggest market is in China. I guess we'll we'll find out. Um, we'll also be able to watch if there's people that are just all of a sudden their schedule is clear. So if you guys can help us with that too, if each one of you kind of monitor and look at a couple people and see, oh, they're not doing anything right now, we could probably figure out you know who else is on that list of of big names, or if you see people that are quietly announcing they're going to China, things like that on their Twitter that nobody really follows. Let us know. 
And then Andrew Shop, thank you for uh, subscribing. KT cleans a lot. Thank you. Thank you for the. I b believe is that a super sticker? I can't see on here, but um, thank you. Uh, thank you, KT cleans a lot. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then Samuel Turner, I fear China attacking U.S. and Taiwan with uh, is favorable April May seas. Oh, with favorable April to May seas. Uh, Samuel, I don't know if you've watched before, but um, in well, I know you've watched. I know you've been here, but the shows I talked about. So there was mafia uh, members that active duty uh, military that said that they were asking for leave and they were not. They were denied for anything into April into May. They could not get leave anything going forward in the, and because you have to do it so many days out, thirty days out, or something else. That they they just aren't told they they weren't told like oh you can do it in June you can get your leave they're saying you got to check back after that so multiple members at least now three after we announced the first two another person came forward said that they were denied their leave now they get compensated for their leave or it gets pushed back or whatever else but they were said specifically they could not go on leave April into May so I asked is that a sign and I was asking the military group. Hey, do you know if that's strange? I know they can deny it anytime they want. They don't, they don't have to give you your leave. Uh, they have to compensate you for it at some point before you leave, but uh, they they can't uh, they can deny it. So we were looking at the time frame of all of these kind of things lining up, and it also lined up with the solar eclipse, with National Guard doing all this stuff, and then all of these crazy weird infrastructure things that are going on right now. All the weird hacks, blackouts and brownouts. Who knows? It very well could be kind of a half cover for all the solar events. I don't know, but it is pretty nuts. By the way, if you're not following those solar events, like I said earlier, go watch wages. There's storm after storm. It's like every two days. Wages, there was very little solar activity for a while. And I remember wages was like kind of sitting around like going, gosh, there's nothing going on. Now wages has his hands full covering solar storm after solar storm after solar storm after solar storm so whatever's going on i don't have a good feeling about it it's all lining up with all of the other world events going on so gosh it's kind of like which which road is this going to go down um and samuel turner thank you i appreciate that kt cleans reed dwyer reed dwyer thank you for subscribing and Pauline medina thank you for becoming a member and then exo to quilt thank you again i appreciate you um, giving us a chance and subscribing new hampshire rare condition caused patient to see demonic faces says study on visual disorder you may have already seen this over on jacob i found this out through one of his thumbnails actually um and i was like what there's a rare disorder where this guy was seeing people's faces their mouth was stretching their ears from the side uh i'll show you a picture so you you get a, a frame of reference for this. This is what this guy sees. And he, they say that it's a live thing. It doesn't affect anywhere else on their body. That is what's so spooky about this. It doesn't affect their arms, their fingers, their legs, anything else. It just affects faces. Now they compared it in this article. They talk about face blindness. And actually somebody who they say is face blind is Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt apparently cannot remember faces. Doesn't matter how many times he meets somebody, he forgets their face. I've never heard of that. Um, in fact, I kind of th think I heard about it like on a stupid 60 second video somewhere a couple years ago about Brad Pitt, but I've never heard of that either. This one's face. Uh, I don't know what the, they, they're. It's some crazy, crazy long name. Pro pop pro pop pro pop, Yak yak yak. Uh, you guys get the point. It's some huge 45-letter word, pro prasipona something. But they say it's a real thing, and they're seeing demonic faces. At the same time, the same day that this came out, they come out with the devil comet. They're saying the devil comet is, is uh, going to be visible during the solar eclipse. And this is even more spooky. Dex, during our live stream, which you guys got to go watch... Uh, during the live stream, he found out that he looked at the name, and I, I kept thinking, 
I, I told you, I, I said right before the show, it looks familiar. Dex kept thinking the same thing. He goes, looks it up. It was the Millennium Falcon Comet, and they changed the name to the Devil Comet. Why did they do that? Uh, but Dex, this is so weird. So this guy, and they also describe in this article how if they're moving, it moves with it. So it's something that's constantly changing. Is this guy, does he have a, a disease? Does he have a syndrome? Does he have a disorder? Or is he actually seeing demonic entities? That's the question, and I'll leave that up for you guys. Uh, Dex, isn't that freaky? That's scary. It certainly is. I mean, I couldn't imagine having that that disorder, if that's what it is, or even worse, possession, if that's what it is. But whatever is causing you to see that um, or present that in its, in its way to you, that's got to be pretty freaky. Um, you know, just the, the images alone. Now, apparently it was said that when he looked at two-dimensional images, it didn't have that problem. So looking at a photograph on a piece of paper, no big deal. But when you're looking at a, you know, a face right in front of you, they would look that way. Now there's a movie smile. Um, it shows everybody smiling. Uh, it's, it's, a, I, I, I've actually thought about, I, I, I don't like scary movies. Funny, funnily enough, I, um, but I keep seeing this when I'm thinking about watching it. It's by the same, I think it's A24. The only reason I thought about watching it is because it was made by A24. A24 is who is making the coming up Civil War movie. And I've actually watched like X Machina and a couple of the others from A24 to see like they actually put out crazy, uh, weird movies. Um, because I was trying to come up with like a connection, like, these production companies, they have a lot of symbolism in, in the things. Uh, when they do movies, you'll see the production names. Even the companies they set up just for that movie have really weird cryptic names. All sorts of weird stuff. But I just thought that that's like super, super creepy. The guy is literally seeing entities and they're calling it a disorder. What does that say too? The guy's seeing, they don't want to say maybe he's just actually seeing the evil in people or something. But yeah, spooky. And then the devil comet thing, again, it's really, really weird. And uh, before we move on, this is a great, great resource. If you haven't already seen this, again, go over and check out Jace Medical. You'll have to go there to learn more. But if you have wondered, like, what do I do about my regular medications during a disaster? Uh, this is great, not only because you can go get something like the Jace case, which has uh, life-saving medications and antibiotics all in a kit. Uh, obviously, not a lot of people have just extra antibiotics. Usually, when you're given them at the doctor, you take them. Uh, but this, you can get a Jace case that has a lot of that stuff in it for kind of the basic needs. Again, uh, basic antibiotics are a must in an SHTF world. But you can also, this is the really cool deal with Jace, is you can actually get up to a year supply of your regular medicines. Now, it depends. They don't have all of them, but there's a lot of things that you can actually get uh, your uh, year supply of. And then, uh, obviously, you can rotate your normal prescription in and always have a year. So, if again, you can say it's, it's coming up on a, a year. You can actually take the oldest uh, dose that you get and then you can rotate that in so go and check uh, again some folks I guess it depends on insurance things different things like that uh, one person told us that they could only get three months but still 90 days even if if you could only get 90 days of your regular medication that's a huge deal uh, that that's a, if you have a disaster and being able to have your medications it's a giant thing you can also add on to the Jace case if you just want to get the prepackaged thing. You can add things like albuterol. Uh, again, if you have asthma or something like that, something like that would be extremely helpful. Because uh, pharmacies will not be open if SHTF happens, it, nor if we have a big enough d uh, natural disasters. These aren't just good for things like that. If something like a Hurricane Katrina happened, to have extra stuff like that is an amazing thing. Go to marfuglenews.com slash Jace. They have board certified doctors. It's a, uh, a it's a legit uh, telehealth site, so you'll be able to do everything 
you would be able to do, and you do it with a real board-certified doctor. All right, marfuglenews.com slash J-A-S-E, and thank you guys for, again, if you go through us, you save money, and you help us at the same time. Uh, Dex, talk about the Belmarsh hey. Prison. Uh, real quick, I just got uh, an update from Brian Knight about some uh, quakes over there on Cascadia. Uh, five of them, one of them being a 5.7, and I put it in screener for you if you want. Oh, don't tell me that. Okay, so we have a live update. This is from Marfia member Brian Knight. And it looks like we have... Rip, rip curl, if you're still here, pay... Uh, Pay attention to. Heck, Ilea, if you're here, I, I know Ilea's been super busy. She's over on the West Coast, too. Look at that. So, if you don't know why this is important, why we follow it, Cascadia, the Cascadia subduction zone is capable of a 9.0 earthquake. Think Japan, only worse. Uh, think about more metropolis uh, metropolises right in the metropolitan areas, right in the uh, way of a tsunami. So look at that. Multiple, a 5.7, 4.8, 3.5, 4.9, 4 4.9. Right there. That's no good. I'm, it kind of makes me feel better that it, I guess it's in the general area. But we've seen ones uh, when we were really on kind of high alert over here is when it was right at the, the bend and when it was right at the crack right here. It was right at the corner and it was on the line. Uh, what makes... That's kind of odd. It's happening on both sides of the subduction zone. A 5.7 and a 4.8. What is the time difference on this? When is that one? That one's 2023, two minutes apart. And then 2023, and then a few hours, seven hours apart. Something's shaking. So be alert, uh, West Coast folks. You should have a basic plan for this anyways. Uh, if you are on the West Coast and you don't have an earthquake plan, you are a word that that is not nice please go get yourself um prepped up if you are on the west coast and you do not have a plan please have one uh there was another 2.5 morton washington so yeah i'm hoping and then up one up in uh alaska let's see what's on the other side the whole ring of fire here 4.9 4.6 watch some of my videos on uh, Cascadia if you can if you don't know what's going on there Cascadia subduction zone and then uh, let's see here and then uh, Dex talk about the Belmarsh prison and what's going on with yeah, you? Certainly. Julian? So this is where uh, Assange, Julian Assange, has been uh, living as of recently and uh, not by his choice. But uh, he had a, a minor victory or maybe a, even a major victory, depending on how you look at it, uh, in his l long court case that he's had with the British courts. They're obviously trying to extradite him to the U.S., um, he was facing immediate extradition, and the court ruled uh, that he um, does not have to be immediately extradited. Instead, they said that he actually has, quote, real prospect of success, end quote, in three of his grounds for appeals against the 2022 decision from the UK government allowing his extradition. So um, basically, they what I'm assuming that means is they looked at the case and said, you know what, you'd actually have a case here as opposed to looking at it and say, nah, you really not, got no case. We're not even going to hear it you can be immediately extradited. So um, it sounds like they're going to give him time uh, to have his case heard. Uh, it sounds like he's got multiple different grounds for trying to appeal or prevent the extradition. Uh, so that's that's the latest. So that was, the I guess, the win for it. I guess, you know, we don't hear much about him lately. 
every now and then it pops up. And as you know, we, I don't think he gets to see the light of day either. He's probably spending, you know, most of his time in a, in solitary confinement. And in case you didn't know, uh, WikiLeaks is, is like falling apart. Um, they say millions of leaks have actually gone uh, dead. Uh, if if you did not know that, there are whole lists on here that have basically either just disappeared. Um, all of these different vaults, a lot of them you go to, and it will say Air Four Hundred Four. So and um, um, that that we covered that last week. So. W- with everything that's going on with him, all that stuff, uh, a lot of these vaults, uh, apparently there's issues. Uh, there's even issues with just simple things on the website, I think. Let's see here. Something, you know, it, it, they said something. If you go and, and search things, that it would just bring you right back to the home page. Lots of issues. So, yeah, um, I don't know if that's fixed now, but kind of from the surface level, I guess, but they had less than 3,000 leaks or something from over 10 million, that which they used to brag. Don't know what's happening there, but. And then where's Diddy? What we know about the investigation into the music mogul. Dex, actually, uh, Surprisingly enough, I think you know a little bit more about this than I do. I um, I think it's it, yeah. it's pretty insane. I I, I honestly don't. Uh, I don't want to think that's the case, but uh, but yeah, it is the other distraction that's going on, or the big distraction that's going on in some people's minds. Uh, in other people's minds, they think it's a uh, you know a really big case too, and it may very well be uh, if it turns out to be the the um, likes of EpiPen, um, and if it goes down in a, in a big way like that, and a lot becomes re- gets revealed, and a lot of evidence is shown that he's done a lot of the things that they're making claims that he's done, then this will be a big deal. Uh, right now, they're they're sort of speculating that he's not known where his location is. Um, this article does talk a little bit about what we talked about last night that there was early speculation that he had fled to Antigua. Uh, his plane had landed on that Barumba Island or whatever it was, uh, but he wasn't on that plane. Um, TMZ actually showed uh, videos of him at the Miami Opalaka Executive Airport, which we talked about last night. But ever since then, out, outside of that, at this moment, they don't know where he is. Now, he did release a statement, apparently, um, saying that, you know, I don't remember his exact words, but basically saying he was innocent and that this was, you know, a harsh military use of military force or, you know, something along that. Um, the, the raids by law enforcement and on two of his homes earlier in the day, um, and he was innocent of any wrongdoing. So in generalities, I'm not quoting him. But uh, that's that's what we have so far. Now, the, the case itself, the the strings and the tentacles are starting to spread out. Now you're getting all sorts of rumors and all sorts of dots being connected online about, are there connections between him and this person and him and that person, even a, I believe a recent case filing is even showing William uh, from the UK as named in a case that involves uh, Diddy. So we may see this thing expand uh, quite a bit um, or it may not, but We'll keep watching it for uh, the spectacle that it is, uh, but try not to be too distracted by it until something substantive comes out. At the same time as all of these other events are happening, this happens, right? It's almost like it's almost like they. Uh, I, I wonder how many regular people even know about the bridge thing. You know, I know that it's big news, and we all pay attention really closely, but. I, I heard people saying, oh, who cares? It's just a bridge. It's going to br- mess up traffic. Why are people making a big deal out of it? I see that almost purposely being put out there, trying to minimize what, what that was. That's infrastructure. Why would you want to minimize a huge hit on our infrastructure? It seems kind of odd. As far as the, the Diddy thing, come on. We're talking about the U.S. Gov and they're, they're 
using offices at the high Department of Homeland Security. You're saying that they don't know where this guy is. They've got satellites tracking his every move. If he's if he's not getting if they don't know exactly where he is, then they're purposely letting him be wherever I, the heck he is. That's what my I, I, is. I yeah I I think they know where he is. I just think the media and everyone else doesn't know where he is. That's the interesting part. Yeah, and there's no way they don't know where he is. They oh, they knew well, maybe, where he was the moment they started all this, and they've probably been tracking him. And maybe they know where he is, but they have. And there's the whole like they can't just go in with American people and grab him because he already got out. Uh, it, maybe he's in. It, you know, back when I was in high school, there was. This, I think he's in America. That's my opinion, though. There was this uh, story about this kid, that him and his friend. I, oh no! Wait, I'm. There's two different big crimes that happened in Seattle back in the early 2000s. And this kid, um, uh, I think him and his friend robbed a jewelry store and one of them ended up fleeing and he was a dual citizen in in Switzerland. I think it was Switzerland. Isn't Switzerland? The, it was, yeah. He ended up going to Switzerland and our local news, like, you know, everybody's got their local news channel that does investigates. Uh, they went and they found him just walking around Switzerland. And this was after years of being on the run. And he was able to just basically go to Switzerland and live his life out. And I don't think anything ever happened to him. Like they couldn't extradite him. It was because of the place it was. Switzerland or the other S1? Was it Sweden? No, I think it was Switzerland. Swiss bank accounts. Yeah, yeah, it was the same place they have Swiss bank accounts. Um, I'll have to find that story. I I don't think he ever actually served time, and he they ended up like either taking someone's life, doing um a jewelry store robbery, or almost taking somebody's life. That around that same time, there were these two guys that actually uh murdered one of my uh one of my good friends. And it was pretty, pretty rough. Those kids did get caught. Um, I told you guys about that. They took them out to Boom City and did pretty much every way. And it turns out they did it because they thought he had uh, slept with one of the girls, uh, one of the guy's girlfriends. And the guy was a sheriff's son that, that murdered him. And they even helped the family look for him. They did everything they could. They popped him. They hammered him. They put a bag over him. They, uh, you know, thanked him. And they said it was because they, this girl told them that he did stuff to her. And then afterwards admitted that she was just lying to get them pissed off at each other. It was really a sad story. Oh man. So messed up. Uh, John, John Jasmer. And then out of California, USFTC could bring suit or reach settlement with TikTok over privacy probes, says source. And uh, again, it says the U.S. Federal Trade Commission could resolve its investigation into Chinese-owned short video app TikTok over allegedly faulty privacy and data security practices by either filing suit or reaching a settlement in the coming weeks, a source told Reuters. Politico early reported that the potential FTC action on Tuesday citing people with direct knowledge of the matter, the FTC and TikTok declined to comment. Reuters in 2020 reported that FTC and the U.S. Justice Department were looking into allegations that the popular social media app failed to live up to a 2019 agreement aimed at protecting children's privacy. The probe is separate from the ongoing concerns in Congress about the potential that the data of TikTok's 170 million U.S. users could be improperly accessed by the Chinese government. TikTok denies the allegation and says it has robust data security provisions. Earlier in March, the U.S. House of Republicans our representatives overwhelmingly voted to pass a bill giving ByteDance, the Chinese company that owns TikTok, about six months to sell the U.S. assets of the app or face a ban, citing national security concerns. It says senators are still undecided on how to pro uh, proceed. So, and JB actually said he would sign the bill. He said, oh, if it comes across my desk, I'll definitely sign it. Like, this is, it smells fishy all the way around. 
But again, most people are saying, oh, it's because they can't control TikTok. Some are saying that this bill is actually evil because they're going to try to control others. The bill, if they did hide it in there, they did a really good job of doing it in legal jargon because it pretty much makes it clear that uh, it has to be owned or run by and headquartered in a foreign adversary country in one of four, China, Iran, Russia, somewhere else, whatever. But who knows? Maybe then any company they could go, oh, well, you you're secretly working with China or something and then shut it down. Like if they wanted to try to shut down someone, somebody like X or something. There's a lot of bad information about it and a lot of people that are very confused on it. Mainly, though, TikTok in its in its own right uh, is a very scary thing when you think of the capabilities that China is actually working on as far as data bio uh, stuff that they're working on and as far as uh, electronic warfare stuff that they're working on so yeah I guess there really is a bad thing but are they do they really have good intentions about you know taking down TikTok I don't know um, but yeah Dex what do you why do you think that they're do you think they have a, a fighting chance no, I, I think they're toast. Um, it just, I, you know, it's all, it's almost interesting when you start to think about who may be trying to buy them. And is that, is that part of the plan um, to see if they could give up uh, the ownership for a large sum of money? You know, it's one way of say forcing a company to sell or will they just walk away and say, Hey, we're just going to pack it up and go home and you can't have our algorithm. That would be interesting. Um, but there is a lot of folks that are, especially in power positions, uh, former power positions and connected with lots of money, both from the Saudis and from uh, Israel and others, that have deep pockets that are trying to, you know, bring together a lot of deep pockets to potentially buy it. And it just makes me wonder how much of this was uh, a push to do that, because there is something valuable in that cave, that technology and it's not just a commercial viability. I think it's more of a social and programmatic and um, potentially, you know, even even more meaningful to a government to have power over. Look at, <clears throat> and look they don't at how want much, an external to have it. Look at how much our culture has changed. And it, it looks like there is an external force changing our culture. And that external source may have people on the inside. Look at how much our culture has changed in a sh short few years and look at where it's heavily pushing v certain views. And then that algorithm, people really don't understand how powerful the algorithm is. ByteDance had something they said was as powerful as a nuclear weapon. That's what they, they described this algorithm as. And if you've used TikTok, you know. It, it can keep you engaged. It is something that every company in the world is trying to do, is to keep your attention. It's hard to keep people for more than three minutes anymore. We do a long form show. We know how many people drop off at certain times. It's, it's really insane. And it, it's really hurt uh, everybody's attention spans too. People really, and it, it's something that happens to all of us. It happens to me. Our attention spans are dwindling because of things like shorts and uh, TikTok and things like this. It's getting us used to even faster chunks of content. Soon it's going to be, you know, ow my balls uh, f from idiocracy. It, it's, uh, but that, that algorithm, it can really, really understand who you are and feed you up stuff that is going to either enrage you, piss you off, make you happy, make you cry, whatever. And they can sneak things in. They can sneak in. They can... Use it to formulate and change your world views. They can change your opinion on something. Think about how powerful that is. If you control information, you control the world. And I don't think the U.S. totally, I, you know, U.S. could be like, ah, well, we can't have them having our control. Or they're in on it. Who knows? Um, by the way, shipping late May energy. If you haven't already, make sure to go check out the uh, Flex Tactical. This is definitely our best recommendation for a solar generator. Uh, if you do get your name on it now, again, make sure you know that there is a wait, but you're waiting for the best. You're also waiting for a solar generator that doesn't have ties to 
kind of the folks we were just talking about. Uh, this is actually the same generator that just won the STTR Phase 2 contract and is going to be shipping out with the U.S. Army. So these are tough. They're built like tanks. They're built like appliances used to be built. They're built with all the finest components. They're built with the best lithium. Uh, this is something where, again, the Army has chose this one. It has built-in batteries, 1,500-pound latches, reinforced steel frame. This thing has it all, and it is modular and flexible. The Army picked this one because not a, you know they don't care about uh, diamond-encrusted uh, scales. Uh, they care if it turns on, and it turns on every time. As far as reliability, if you're thinking about power and what f you know function it has and the role it plays, you want it to work every single time. It is an electronic, so if you're going to get one, you definitely don't want to get one that somebody's going to be able to turn off remotely or it just stops working after four or five days or four or five months. You want it to last years. So that is what you get with a Flex Tactical or anything from Energy. All of their, uh, again, modular and expandable solar generators work like Lego. You can actually add in as many batteries as you want, up to 96. Not to mention you can add in different mods that change the overall performance, allow you to plug in more solar panels, allow you to super or rapid charge it. Uh, you can charge a single battery in as little as 40 minutes uh, if you plug it into the wall, or you can plug in three times the amount of the solar panels so you can charge it three times as fast. It's really, really cool, and you have unlimited power. It's silent. Nobody's going to hear it. That's a huge thing, being a gray man during an SHTF is going to be a big deal. You don't if you have a gas generator, you know they're loud. Uh, even if you really want to spend a lot of money, you can get a somewhat quiet one, but st people are still going to be able to hear them, especially uh, if stuff goes bad. People are going to be walking around neighborhoods listening for the generators. They're going to go target that house right away and go, "I want your generator." And I'm not going to take a no for an answer. So this is silent. You can run it inside your home. Nobody will even know you have it. Uh, again, very, very awesome thing. And you can have that power stored. When your power goes out, you can even have a UPS uh, mod to where it's just going to flip right over. So go check out all of the mods and all of the different options. And it's going to expand over time. The only downside, I think the only downside is the, the weight for uh, the initial unit. They are all built in small batches. This is an independent company. Uh, it's a very, very very good product. Go to marfuglenews.com slash energy. You can save a huge chunk when you use the code marfugle and you can help us out at the same time. Thank you guys for doing so. I appreciate it. And I uh, I know once you get it, you'll be happy with it. So, um, and then the cryo volcanic devil comet they they changed the name on this thing and I nobody even mentions it in any of the articles that's what's so weird about this they just changed the name it was called the Millennium Falcon nobody even makes reference to the fact that this was a Millennium Falcon maybe they've changed it but from when we were looking at all the different coverage nobody covered that this used to be the Millennium Falcon they called it the Millennium Falcon because of its odd shape. Now they're calling it the Devil Comet. It is supposedly going to be visible during the whole solar eclipse thing. The same solar eclipse that they're going to be uh, deploying National Guard to. Very odd. Usually they're, they're uh, reserved for disasters and, and uh, bad events. But apparently that's... <laughs> potentially going to happen uh, with all this talk of a civil conflict it's very weird that they are deploying but at the same time you may be able to see this devil comet show you a, a picture here if I, I think I might have to go to the original I think I do yeah check this uh, check this check this out you zoom into this and by the way this doesn't look like the pictures they showed of the uh, Millennium Falcon maybe they renamed it because devil fit better but along all the lines of the devil talk and now the devil comment the same day, the devil syndrome, it's creepy. Dex, it's really pretty as far as the picture they say. This is supposedly a picture of it. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it certainly is. And I got, I found a piece of uh, news. It came by the way of, I think it's Eileen 
from the Fugle fam. If I got your name wrong, I apologize, but you know who sent it. Um, but I found this one com- one quote in another article about it that says the outburst caused the uh, comet to distort into a horseshoe or horn shape with a dark center and bright wings or point. Hence why many media outlets nicknamed it the Devil Comet, also called the Millennium Falcon Comet. Um, after the outburst, the comet settled down again and its brightness remained steady. So I don't know if it's because it used to be called the Millennium Falcon Comet and it changed as it, you know, it keeps getting distorted as it moves, you know, in its orbit. Sometimes it gets closer to the sun and the heat messes it up. Um, and, or if it's, they just are debating which name to use, but apparently a year ago it was Millennium Falcon and now it is the, uh, Devil Comet. And then they, of course, it's like Apophis. They name it after the god of chaos. It's like they always name these things like end timesy type things, right? And these are all doctors and scientists. It's just, I don't know. It's just a little creepy. And it might even be visible when the eclipse happened. Are you going to go to the eclipse? I know some of you, are you in the direct line of it and just have to walk outside your house? Have you bought the stupid little special glasses you need to go get? Um, are you going to be having a house party with your friends over and watching the uh, eclipse? They are telling you to stay home. It's super weird. A lot of the places are telling you not to leave home during these events. Why? Why are they checking bags in the New York subways? Why is National Guard deployed and not actually helping any crime? All the New York... And by the way, if you're from New York, let me know if this is wrong. New Yorkers said there's just as much crime going on, but now... They have National Guard checking bags. They're, it seems like their their opinion, as a New Yorker, said that they believe that they are checking for terror activity. That that's what they're... They're looking for radiological stuff or big boom booms because they believe something is going to happen. Go, uh, go look at my Twitter. Go uh, follow me on Twitter, on X, because there was a Fugle fam former deputy marshal that shared a really kind of freaky chunk of of, uh, intel over there, uh, basically saying, believe around a major holiday, some big thing will happen. Not any different than what we kind of think is going to happen, but also it lines up with what Sheriff Rick Jones was warning about and nationwide events. So we as preppers, we're not going to be afraid of this. We're going to keep our faith that it is going to all work out. Especially if if you are good with yours, if you're good with your higher power, if you're good with your God, uh, then you should be good. Um, I'm I'm praying that everything goes well, but unfortunately, I think that obviously uh, we have a lot of things lining up right now, almost like it's purposeful by a higher power. <laughs> so I hope that all of you guys. Uh, Go check out the website. Make sure to, of course, go to marfuglenews.com. And, of course, check out marfuglenews.com slash friends. And go subscribe to our mods. They do an awesome, awesome thing for the Fugle fam. They help everybody. So make sure to go return the favor. Thank you, Samuel Turner. Thank you, KT Cleans a lot. Letitia Stoll. Cryptic. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Judy Bira. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Troy Lee, uh, David Wad, thank you for the the diamond uh, super uh, super sticker there. And then Judy Beer again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Bobby Sue, thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's see here. And thank you, everybody. We're about to do the shout Make sure to click this if you want to go watch that Marfugal News video. And it is now time for the shout It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout Shout, shoutro, aka cilantro. Dex, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Uh, much love. Great job, brother. Picture. They took a right now and took the bridge out. I said, oh no, they're gonna get ya. The fire starts now and it gets bigger. Take a look at 